right, welcome back to the Sons of Montezuma.com film room. I am back once again with Coach Carrasco. Coach C, how are you doing, man? Doing good. I'm fired up over that last win. Big win against those Wildcats. And uh, it's always fun to look up or to the next game after a big win like that against the Arizona Wildcats. So the Aztecs are now 2-0 and with that big win over the University of Arizona, 38 to 14 it was it was over before it began which was great for us Aztecs fans but it was also kind of a tale of two halves once again they they didn't really put together a a total complete game the first half was just dominated by the Aztecs the second half was as well but the offensive production didn't yield any points other than maybe a field goal i believe so there's plenty of things to work on plenty of areas to improve so let's get into some of the game film and and see what some of your uh highlights on that aztecs arizona game were the plays that we're going to go over to just kind of share what were the little things of making sure a victory was going to happen on the road and you know Every team, you have to ask the question from the very beginning, what does it take to be a consistent winner? And of course, you got to be as good as you are at home with the home crowd and the band playing, no travel, you got rest and everything and you're ready to go. The other team had to do the big travel, but you got to be able to produce the same kind of results when you go on the road and where everything seems to be against you, yet you can still stay focused. And the ideas that have come through college football history from the 70s wishbone attack that, you know, Bear Bryant and the great Alabama teams and the, you know, Oklahoma Sooners, you know, the great pro attack of the 80s by the Miami Hurricanes. Steve Spurrier spreading you out with his crazy air raid and, you know, of the 90s and Nebraska with that great option attack, you know, that they had going in the 90s, you know, physical or Spurrier in the, when the, Florida Gators was all about speed, read coverage, get it out quick to your playmakers and just get that scoreboard just ringing up point after point after point, you know, to what the Oregon Ducks then brought in this new era of just high tempo, fast pace, make it easy reads as far as the, the, the communication, you know, of just play fast, keep, you know, keep the defense completely off balance because you're just, you're just motoring down the field getting in play after play at, at, a, at a high pitch pace that is just crazy you know so now what's going on is everybody it seems is running this zone read scheme where the running back is not the only running back anymore it's the quarterback that's also a slasher he's that yeah. slash guy he's a thrower he's a runner and and he's got to be a leader so there's a lot on the plate nowadays of quarterbacks but Football is still the same thing. It, the one thing that's never changed, the team that blocks and tackles the best, that does their job the best, is going to be the consistent winner, no yeah. matter what. And with San Diego State, what we're going to see on the little things here that maybe a lot of fans won't notice of what's going on, what makes a play successful, and what can hurt you when you're not doing the fundamentals right. And so here we got a third and two situation here. They're backed up, 7 nothing lead or whatever else. But Arizona's thinking, man, if we can get a stop, we can flip this position of this field, have a short field to work with, and, and, and tie this game up. So this is a big, big uh, part of the game. And what you're going to see from San Diego State, first of all, I want you to just notice here. It's going to be a play action. We call this a slide by the tight end. In the olden days, in the old West Coast scheme, when you give a fake to a running back and you're – Number two guy in the backfield. In this case here, it's a tight end. This is a 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back. He's going to slide behind the line of scrimmage. It's a great call by the OC because they love to run this kick, zone kick scheme that I called last week, you know, where this guy is going to run across, block the end. These linemen here are in charge of the next five. And then on the third and two, deep in, backed up in your own territory, it's a great call because they, they should honor the running game. It's a great running formation. It's a great time to call a running play because it's safe. San Diego State ends up going play action. Now, when you do play action, linebackers are taught to read hats of the linemen. 
And a lot of times on play action, it doesn't work too well because a lot of linemen, because it is a pass play, their hats will raise up high because they're basically pass blocking. But if they're coached really well, and you're going to see it here, that if they keep their helmets low, low hats, really sell that run, linebackers will see that and they'll bite on that. And wow. so what we're going to see here is that you're going to see these linemen, if we just focus on the linemen first and all, you're going to see low hats. You see all the white helmets above our boys. You see even this tackle, you could see he's really got his shoulders bent, good bent action, good knee bend by our boys up front. And it really gets this guy to bite. And it shell sells one. And this our tight end here does a great job because he really has got his eyes focused on that nice kick block. This linebacker feels like he's got a feel. And Bell here does a nice job getting his hands up. He's going to attack hard inside. And it's a great, great fake. And it's because of the linemen, our bigs up here in front. They do their job. They do the little thing there of selling the block where it looks like it's a run play. So right there, you have a great chance of winning this down just because of what our bigs have done up front. And so Brookshire does a good job here of just giving him that fake right in there. And then he's going to sell it, get it to that flat there. Then here's our skills doing their job. His job is, we call it an MDM block. And what that means is it's a most dangerous man. If this guy really would have got sold into that, and he dives into that, you leave him alone, and 81 then gets his eyes on this guy, all right? Mm -hmm. Got Arizona it. should have this play stop, but these are the little things. If you're not doing the little things well, then it's going to hurt you. Well, we get 81, gets the block that he needs. 23 on that team does it. He takes a real bad angle. Big mistake if he would have just stayed home because they were kind of in a zone look and all that. He makes a play here, but because the San Diego State doing the little things right, here's a potential. But this is the reason why this play works. We always told our running backs, no matter what level I coach, every big run that you see, it's always because a receiver made his block. Wow. When the linemen make their blocks, you're going to get your five to six. Right. But when the receivers make their blocks, then you're going to get a big run. And we're going to watch our wide out here at the bottom of the screen. This guy is 10 yards down the field. He is still locked into his receiver and just watch him play <laughs> football. He's still on him and then he just throws him. You talk about a great play that you need when it comes to, you know, doing your job. Low hat by the lineman, nice block by 81. And then you got a wide out who's working hard for his teammate to make sure that, you know, they're probably just thinking, let's just get the first down and move on. But because this wideout does his job, I think that's Kobe. I'm not too sure. And I didn't see his number, but this is great. You see his base of his feet. He's in a great position. Number two is working his tail off to get off that block. And he can't get off that block. And then our wideout there, our San Diego State wideout, he reminds him by just the finish that we need from him, just finishes him. And it's a great job that allows our big tight end to lumber down the field, you know. And all of a sudden, you flip the field in one play. He you threw him the right field he, in one play, and it's really because your skill guys did their job. He threw him right did off the screen, job. man. He threw him right out of the picture. Threw him right out of the picture, but it started <laughs> with the old lineman selling that low hat. You yeah. got a low. You did your job. It made the quarterback's job a whole lot easier to sell that fake. And all, and then the receiver made sure that that play turned in not to an average play, but it turned into a big play. And now here, again, the theme, blocking and tackling, but we're going to focus on the skill guys. This is the best football player on this whole Aztec team here, at least on the offensive side of the ball, right? That 54 on that defensive side of the ball is pretty special. Well, here's the other special one here on the offensive side of the ball is Greg Bell. The guy's dynamite. He had a big run for the first touchdown in the game. But right now, they're going to run what we call stretch, an outside zone play, but they're going to run it with the quarterback. And this guy is going to be the lead blocker. Your superstar player is going to be your lead blocker. And you're going to see this skill guy and this skill guy who's going to block play side to be the lead guys for their quarterback to read. And you're going to see three guys from the QB, a star running back, 
who has a future to play on Sundays and a tight end that's just going to say, listen, we're going to be more physical than you, and we're just going to go ahead, and you're going to feel our presence. And you got a superstar running back getting in there and just driving the guy. Puts his inside shoulder, and he drives, and he just finishes him. And then look at this quarterback the way he finishes. Just punishing guys, pushing dudes around, letting the guys know that we've come to your house, Arizona Wildcats, and we're going to come to eat. But we're going to take what we want by just letting you know that we come to play football. We're not going to finesse you. We're not going to try to do cute things on you. This is the new Arizona home team, and we're called the San Diego State Aztecs. <laughs> and we're going to stamp our name in your end zone. And it starts with our star running back just finishing, and then the quarterback doing his job lowering his shoulder. You talk about a statement. After you have a seven-point lead, you just got yourself a 92-yard drive by doing the little basics of your skill, guys, understanding that you got to play physical football, too. Started with the O-linemen, doing their job, low hat, finishing, doing their job. But I tell you what, there's nothing more fire for a lineman to see that when they see a quarterback having a physical run, when they're seeing running backs finish off guys. But then when you start seeing receivers wanting to join in the act, and block DBs 10, 15 yards down the field and shoving them into their own sideline, that's when you get to see your teammates have these big highlight runs that they'll never forget for the rest of their lives. Now, I'm going to fast forward to this point. And to me, it's the biggest play of the game. It's the most important play of the game. I just call it the play of the game. He's like, well, why is this the play of the game? We're up 28 to 7. There's two minutes left in the second half. And the reason why this is the play of the game for a couple of reasons. One, you got to, when you have a team by the throat, you got to keep your foot on their throat, but you got to put it, if you have a chance to finish off a team in the first half where they're going into halftime back to their locker room, that it doesn't matter what their football coach tells them, whatever great Newt Rockney speech he has for them, they're not hearing it because they just know they're just getting physically beat and you just put seven on them to just kind of remind them that this uphill battle, we just made it a whole lot harder for you and all. The other reason why this is play of the game, last week we talked about Brookshire making that, that interception that he had on the deep throw. And we talked yeah. about the T1 throw that he should have put a little bit more air on that in that corner and all that. And I said last week, I mentioned last week, he's going to want that opportunity again. And so here's the OC putting him in a position that he's going to give him that opportunity again here. And it's at a very critical state of the game, a critical point. And again, how is it 28-7 as a critical point? Because again, two minutes left, you want to give the impression, Arizona Wildcat, you have no hope of winning this game. No hope. And it's plays like this where you're physically beating them up, but then you also do the the, the finesse thing, if you will, the fancy play. And the reason why this is a fancy play is because it's an intelligent play. We got a quarterback here who's seeing coverage. It's going to be a play action play here. And this free safety is really hinted strong on this side of the field. It's the short side of the field where he's playing the boundary. It's called the boundary because they're on this short side of the hash. Now, why is he playing here instead of the middle of the field? Well, look at the formation that San Diego State's in. They got that tight end. I call it a bent position. I would call this Russian bent right. Russian meaning he's gun. We got the tailback to the right side or whatever else. They're an 11 personnel again, one tight end, one back. But remember how the Aztecs love to run that slide and either they're kicking or they're sliding across. And it's two minutes left. It's second and eight. Again, the OC is thinking, Second and eight, you know, let's run the ball here. They got to be, you know, to put it in a third and manageable, okay? That's who we are, and they know that. Arizona knows that. So this guy, knowing that, all right, according to formation, this tight end is probably going to block this guy. The linemen are going to clean up house here. I got to finish this up for any cutback. So he's leveraged him. OC does a great job of giving that impression that that's what's coming. Brookshire does a great job of understanding coverage that there's no help up top up here, okay? 
And they don't run that slide, but because of the formation, it ends up constituting what and how Arizona lines up. So really the formation that is formed and given by the OC, how he situated that, that's really why we got a safety that's come over the top here because he's going to play in that run fit is what he wants to do. And it really has freed up our boys here up top. So you're going to see Brookshire give a good faith. Boys do a great job of establishing the line of scrimmage so that he's going to have time to make a read and carried out by a running back here that really drives hard to get this action by these Wildcats to bite on this thing. You see a quarterback who throws a different ball this week than he did last week. Plenty of air, and he allows his man to just run underneath it. Now, you might say, well, yeah, it's because the coverage is underneath. Well, there was underneath coverage last week, too, you know, and he was just trying to fit it in there. This time he learns, and he just puts a great ball, great route, puts it in that same corner that he wanted last week, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful execution, and it's the play that pretty much finishes off your opponent. Yeah. You know, because once you take the heart out of your opponent, you won. Once his heart is gone, he's not going to give that effort no more and whatever else. Doesn't mean you don't come out and play in the second half. Doesn't mean that at all. But what you did in the first half and what you accomplished in the first half, that's huge. Here's our tight end once again. Great block, doing his job, running back. Great job. Low hats. You just love it. These are the fundamentals you want to establish from day one of camp when you're installing. These are the little coaching points that you got to get your guys to buy into. And then you get a quarterback who shows that, hey, I can learn from my mistakes, take advantage of a one-on-one, and just give a beautiful ball. Great job by the receiver. Finishing. And it's good to see him get that reward because he made that big block on the big tight end run. And then he gets the big play there right before halftime. 